a talent scout, uh, Al Trisconi, if I remember his name, from MGM, saw me in the play, and they were making this movie called uh, Blackboard Jungle at MGM. I had not read the book. It was a big selling book uh, about the school systems in the, in the inner cities. And um, so uh, my friend, the Joe Corey was his name. His real name was Joe Matarano. It was like me, he changed his name. <laughs> but Joe Matarano, Joe Corey, who was on Dear Phoebe, uh, his agent was Burt Marks. Burt Marks was the brother of Samuel Marks, who was a big producer at MGM who discovered Elizabeth Taylor, etc. cetera. Burt uh, found out through Joe that I was going to be uh, taking the screen test. So Burt represented me. And I took a screen test for the part of Santini. And this was so exciting for me to go onto the MGM lot to do a screen test. Now, here I am a couple years before that going to the Lowe's Valentine Theater, watching an MGM movie. And then a couple years later, I'm on the MGM lot, uh, hoping to get a part in an MGM movie. And I screen tested with James Drury. He played the Glenn Ford role in the screen test. Uh, of course, James later went on to do The Virginian. And uh, I got the part. And I got uh, $350 a week. I was very excited. Uh, of course, the stars in there, Glenn Ford, who I'd grown up admiring, uh, just as I did with William Holden, and uh, uh, Louis Calhoun, Anne Francis, um, uh, Richard Kiley from Broadway, and of course the wonderful Sidney Poitier and uh, Vic Morrow, and uh, uh, a, an actor who was going to school at that time. His name was his name is John Ehrman. John later became a big uh, movie director and uh, TV director. Uh, Richard Brooks director, uh, Bill Haley and the Comets, Rock Around the Clock. Uh, it had been famous before then. And uh, Mr. Brooks was looking for something to send the movie off with. And he actually went to Glenn Ford's home to play some music for him. And it was Glenn Ford's son, Peter Ford, that picked Rock Around the Clock. He thought that was uh, the song to do it. And uh, it was. It made a big hit out of the movie, which was about the same time that uh, uh, Rebel Without a Cause was uh, with James Dean and Natalie Wood and, uh, and Sal Mineo, Nick Adams. So uh, both those movies came out about the same time. But I think Rock Around the Clock made the difference, though. You remember that, uh, that music from the, from the movie. And what was the reaction to the film? Oh, it was a tremendous reaction. Some good, some very bad. People thought that that was disgusting to show American schools depicted uh, the way uh, the, it, was, uh, it was done in, in Blackboard Jungle. Uh, I thought I was going to be a, a very famous after that. <laughs> and what did it do for your career? It did absolutely nothing for a while for me. But here's the interesting story. I was staying at a, at a, a little apartment uh, in, in Los Angeles. And uh, $350, I think I made, I worked four weeks. So I got four times $350. So I was waiting for the phone to ring again to get another job. And hopefully when the movie was released, I'd, I'd start working. And uh, I, I was kind of broke at the time. And I'd go downstairs to my mailbox. You have the key and you open it up. And they had a table right beneath the mailboxes. And uh, they put the magazines there. So I uh, was opening up my mailbox. And I go, oh, look at that Life magazine. Hmm. Gee, and I started going through it, and lo and behold, there's a picture of Sidney Poitier, Vic Morrow, uh, Rafael Campos, and myself. And I go, oh my gosh, look at that. And I turn the page and everything else. I think Life magazine was 20 cents at that time, and I didn't have 20 cents. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth, I stole the magazine. <laughs> and if you go through my house, you'll see the pages that I ripped out of the magazine and they're framed <laughs> down my hallway. I was so excited to see my face with all those other wonderful actors.